Hello everyone, welcome to Vario HQ. Today we are doing a live launch event of the Vario XR3 Focal Edition. My name is Jussi Mäkinen, I'm a Chief Brand Officer and I'm here joined by Ferhat. My name is Ferhat Sen and I'm the Director of the XR Technology Solutions at Vario. We have an amazing show today. We will hear everything about the Vario XR3 Focal Edition. What is it, how it's been made and what it's used for. We have guests as John Burwell, our global head of simulation and training. We will hear and see how it's been used at the biggest training and simulation ex exhibition, uh, IETSEC, that happened last week in Florida. And we will have an interview with the general in reserve, in reserve and a former chief of Finnish Defense Forces, uh, Mr. Jar Jarno Lindberg. So amazing show. And, um, Let's start by going, going to the show floor at IETSEC, the biggest training and simulation show that happened last week. And let's hear the feedback to the Vario XR3 Focal Edition from the companies who had early access to this technology. The, the instant reaction of of the fidelity it's it's overwhelming it's it's bar none the best headset the first time we tried the xr3 focal edition you can really see the resolution increase based upon how far the distance the cockpit is from the pilot this allows us to do a lot more training in a way with mixed reality that wasn't possible before well, the vario xr3 focal edition is really allowing us to see how affordable we can make our simulation devices and deliver them at the point of need. Lockheed Martin is aggressively approaching how do we get a simulator into the hands of every pilot and the XR3 Focal Edition is going to assist us in that. We have a number of military customers and they demand high security so with the XR3 uh, Focal Edition we're able to give them that high level of security as it, we are, can use an offline license so there's no connection to the internet and they, they really appreciate the ability to see something within that 45 centimeter focal range specifically their avionics they and they appreciate the ability to reach out and tactically feel or touch that uh knob or that button or their ipad which they may use as their electronic flight bag the focal edition specifically allows you to sit close to cockpit interfaces and be able to see sharp images inside the headset for the real world interface much better it's difficult to imagine virtual reality existing outside of a Vario head mounted display. And really, I can say that even from some of our largest customers across the DoD, some of them step out of our full motion simulator and say, if this doesn't work with Vario, we don't want it. So there you had it amazing feedback from the from the show floor and, and Ferhat you were there can you a little bit explain how the feedback was that was the first time that we publicly showed the focal edition how was it in the show floor well it was it was an amazing experience once again this year too uh, we were basically pretty strong in presence in the other booths like I think like 40 40 different booths in the in the trade show and we had the uh, we had the Vario XR3 focal edition there in the show floor and we even got Code requests on the show floor. This doesn't usually happen, mm. but it was so uh, so like clear and amazing that people were able to have the headset, wear the headset, put the headset on, and be able to see things uh, right right away in an actual deployable mission trainer. Uh, that was uh, there was a big uh, clear success that in, the, in, the, in that sense that people were so able I, to see. And and I could definitely sense the excitement yeah. from our partners. It was like you you, you just seen a video. It was like super clear for everyone. Uh, what it means as long as you put that set on you would be able to see it right away exactly and unfortunately that is really difficult to do uh, through a webinar but trust us it's something worth of actually putting your head, head on but uh, first let's start with a very basics of what is actually the xr3 focal edition as you remember uh, we back in the day vario we did uh, xr1 uh, developer edition so now we improved the xr3 and made it specific purpose made for specific kind of like um, situation and specific use cases. So Ferhat, can you run us through kind of like the basic, what is the XR3 Focal Edition? 
Yeah, that's uh, in principle, there are a few things that, that we did to standard XR3, which is the best mixture test set on the market uh, by far. Um, we just optimized the mixture of the cameras so that it works better uh, and sharper for a certain range that's in a close proximity of the mm. headset bearer. Is it pretty much like the hands? It's an arm's length yeah, reach arm's length. kind of yeah. thing uh, yeah. from like 30 centimeters to 80 centimeters mm. or in imperial units like 12 inches to 31 inches. Right. So whatever is within that range will be more sharper in focus as uh, compared to a standard XR3. Right, right. And uh, what other things are in this focal edition that makes it a little bit different product from the standard XR3? Uh, focal edition, XR3 focal edition comes with full TAA compliance. Um, TAA is a trade, uh, 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 TAA is, uh, enables you to um, Im utilize the headset in secure environments. Mm. And we are able to have this compliance simply because we produce, we manufacture them in our production line in Finland. Right. Uh, that would allow you to uh, buy and utilize the headsets in, uh, in secure environments. And uh, it also comes with the um, per perpetual offline license mm. that, again, is a requirement for um, secure environments where there is no internet connection. Right. So this way, it enables you to use the headset in, uh, in a place where there is no internet connection and in a place where you don't need to create a user account. Right. Uh, you just plug the headset in and it will work uh, without any requiring any, any internet connectivity. And also for our uh, most demanding security, uh, the security demanding customers, we also have this optional, um, optional non-radio frequency version of the, of the XR3 Focal Edition, which basically means that we remove the hardware components that contains the radio frequency capability, completely removed from the headset so that it is not even capable of uh, any, any radio frequency um, uh, abilities to be deployed in a secure environment. Right. And I, I find it like really inspirational that this is a custom made product that really is like done based on the feedback and based on those requirements that we get from the most advanced customers, most demanding customers in this field. So how, how have you felt that process has gone? I think that's, that's part of Vario, Vario mm. culture and the way that Vario, Vario operates. Mm. Uh, we are our fault, we, like we are super uh, up close with our customers and we hear the feedback and we try to find the solution that would enable our customers to utilize in the other headsets and the so services in their own uh, use cases. And th this was a very unique example, one of the unique examples also, one a good, good example that we have designed the standard XR3, uh, which is again uh, the best outside out the market, but we weren't able to see all the use cases and all the potential uh, possibilities that mm. one can use. But the more you speak to the customers, the more you hear what are the potential use mm. cases, which then we went back to the engineer again, come up with this um, variant, which solves a huge um, request that is coming from, especially from the uh, mixed reality domain that needs to use the physical reality that's around you. Yeah, and, and you've been very close uh, working with, of course, with our customers, maybe closer than any other at Vario. So um, I think this closeness to the customers and their demands and how it brings, how it kind of adds to our product roadmap. It's, it's very unique. I totally agree. And, and, and we are all super happy and excited to be able to bring this edition into the market. Um, but otherwise, just kind of like stating, so otherwise the product is just like the XR3, the most advanced product in the market. Yeah, as, as you super nicely summarized, it is the most ex advanced XR3, uh, most advanced mixed reality headset in the market, having human eye resolution, 70 pixels per degree, um, 12 megapixel dual 12 megapixel cameras on, on, on each headset and um, being able to have the integrated hand tracking, integrated audio eye tracking. Uh, they are all packaged and combined with the existing like, uh, amazing benefits of XR3. Exactly, XR3. that even physically it looks exactly like the XR3. So just as comfortable and just as beautiful. Um, I think this next slide, which is actually on, uh, this next slide actually quite, very nicely summarizes uh, of this thing. So this is the about arm's length and there you can see text and small, even the smallest detail in perfect clarity. Yeah, exactly. A bit, maybe we can go a bit deeper on this one, what, what, mm. what the concept is. Yeah. The um, depth of field is the concept that's used in photography or also cinematography. 
So whenever a camera is involved, there is a certain focus distance and a certain depth of field, which means that there's a range um, of a far near plane and a far plane, and whatever is within that range will be in focus, and whatever is beyond or closer to than that their range is going to be out of focus, mm -hmm. which means it's going to be a little blurry. So the in particularly in the um, XR3 Focal Edition, we have this depth of field to be 30 centimeters to 80 centimeters, and um, whatever is your, within that range in your, in your real environment is going to look sharper and clearer compared to a standard XR3. Right, right. And it enables to see all the details, everything, just like in real life. And I think, next slide, we actually have a, a good representation of this one uh, that I always find really, really cool. So in, in here you can actually see, this is a screenshot through the, um, the focal edition take. And so here we have a cockpit and then we have training materials there. Yeah, for example, right now there's a knee board uh, that pilots usually use uh, mm. that's, that's attached on their knees or it could be a tablet uh, mm. that, that they would get some, you get some information from that. And being able to read that closely and clearly uh, with the XRT Focal Edition was the biggest, uh, biggest uh, thing that brings the um, XR3 usability to this particular use case. Exactly, exactly. And, and I, I feel that it really brings parity to the real world um, objects that you're able to bring in uh, mm -hmm. to the digital world. So for everybody out there seeing, so the, the knee board, the, the paper there is real, that's physical, and then the, any, everything around it is, is, is is digital. So this kind of brings super superior parity of the of the digital and the physical in here. And and just looking by the screenshot, you know, you you wouldn't be able to tell that <laughs> you know the the knee bad is actually physical and everything else is digital. And I guess this is the this is the ultimate goal of mixed reality. Yeah, it's it's good that you mentioned because otherwise uh, you would have it have, some viewers could have missed that because it's like a super close sharpness in, in, uh, in, in the virtual one to the, to the uh, mixed reality one. Yeah, exactly. So uh, with this introduction, um, next we are going to see a short video. The video is really cool because it's done by our, our partners uh, Brunner and it introduces Lufthansa aviation training using the XR3 Focal Edition and how it applies to civilian training. Let's have a look. At Lufthansa Aviation Training, we train the future young pilots for Swiss and Edelweiss at our home base training airport in Grenchen. We use the Diamond DA42 specifically for our training. It's in instruments, rating and as well on multi-engine. Unfortunately, sometimes due to the weather you cannot fly and we have been always interested in looking into future solutions. What can we do when we are not able to fly or out of sustainability or environmental areas as well? That's why we came up with the idea if it's possible to have some sort of simulator available where we can fly all the time 24-7 and with every weather. Of course, there is as well a financial benefit behind. It's cheaper to fly an hour in a simulator than compared to an aircraft. But in the end, we have to do the training on the real aircraft as well, because the simulator is quite close, but it cannot represent the aircraft in full reality. For Lufthansa aviation training, it's specifically important that we can keep up with the developments. That means we have to teach the young generation with newer technologies. It's a different way how they learn today compared to previous times. My name is Daniel Jäger. I'm a theoretical knowledge instructor at the Lufthansa Aviation Training Pilot School in Switzerland. And I'm as well responsible for the mixed reality simulator, which we will introduce in future in our training program. We do the training for the young generation for the future Swiss and Edelweiss pilots. Our head of pilot school wanted to see what is possible in our flying school. 
So he started the technology project with the great partners with Brunner and Vario. And in the end, it was way better than actually expected. So we can consider in the future a possible certification and may replace our standard FNPTs. For us, it was very important to get mixed reality because we wanted to go one step further. They can touch the switches from the regular cockpit. They can use their knee board. They can write down clearances. When we're then looking into the virtual world, which is around, I have a huge advantage compared to normal simulators. I have a 360 degree view available. Wherever I look, I can see something. There's no limitation compared to other regular flight simulators of uh, 180 degrees, as example. What is the difference between virtual reality and mixed reality? You can imagine you look outside, you see a virtual world around you, and now with the mixed reality, specifically with the Vario XR3 Focal Edition, we have these two cameras. So those ones are actually filming my whole cockpit, which I have inside. So I can see my hands touching the buttons as well. I can see everything very clear and I can read all the numbers from the Garmin 1000 as I would have in real life without the goggles. How do we see the future at Lufthansa Aviation Training? If the Nova Sim MR and the Varia XR3 Focal Edition, we have great tools available which we will integrate in our syllabus. We can see clearly the future into mixed reality, where we can use it in training with the young generation, where they will reach their targets quicker, more professional, and at a lower cost, and of course, more environmental friendly. Thank you, Lufthansa Aviation Training. Um, that was a great insight in how the XR3 Focal Edition is revolutionizing virtual training. Next, I will have a guest um, online who will join us. Um, he is John Burville. He is a global head of simulation training for Vario. He has experience spanning over 30 years in this field. Um, he has been with Vario uh, from almost the very beginning, um, leading and spearheading um, what we are doing in this industry. And, um, and you could kind of call him as the kind of godfather of the XR3 Focal Edition. Welcome, John. Thank you very much. That's a, a great introduction there. So John, as you know, you have been doing pretty much everything one can do in the, in the industry of simulation and training. You've been writing code, you've been doing marketing, you've been launching companies, bringing companies to US, and, and recently, um, before Vario, we were leading, leading this at, at Bohemia, where we met for the first time. I still remember how you, you know, helped us, challenged us, and, and really kind of like helped us to get on the way on this journey. Uh, with, with all your experience in this field, in, in training and simulation, how does it look like now, uh, the current state of, of, of virtual training um, in this field? Well, I've always really enjoyed uh, working with innovative companies that uh, can disrupt industries. And I think that the, uh, what we're seeing now um, is a major disruption in the sim and training space, which is transitioning from the use of you know, large domes and systems with multiple uh, displays and that to the use of these low footprint devices that use head mounted displays. And this is, uh, this is something that the industry has been looking to try to do for a long time. And it really didn't become uh, you know, viable until uh, you started seeing you know, some of the commodity headsets coming out around seven or eight years ago. You know, at that time, I was at Bohemia. And we had a contract with the Navy to build an F-18 uh, trainer. And so we built the prototype. We took it to the, the, uh, the, the pilots and instructor pilots. And they said, this thing is fantastic, except there's a couple issues with it. One of them is I can't 
it's not enough resolution. I can't read the dials, the gauges and things like that in the virtual space. And the other thing they wanted to do was be able to physically touch objects, to be able to have tactile feedback where they could reach and, and interface with real uh, hardware. And then in many cases, they wanted to run real operational flight programs that would run on you know physical uh, aircraft hardware. And the... Um, at that point, I looked around, I found Fario, and, uh, and you know, ever since that, uh, that I did that, we've been making tremendous progress in, uh, in disrupting the industry. Exactly, and, and, and uh, like I said, big thank you for, for being part of, of Vario and revolutionizing the industry. And um, I think that's something that we've been able to, able to do very successfully um, together. Now, you know, kind of like thinking the 30 years of, or almost 40 years of experience that you had, now we kind of like have all this kind of like put into an incredible product called the XR3 uh, Focal Edition. And you were last week at IETSEC on the show floor. What's your feel feeling? What did the XR3 Focal Edition now introduce to the market? And what are the possibilities that were not there before? Well, I think it's a really interesting story on how the product itself came to be. So um, Vario likes to stay close to the customers, to be listening to what they said and uh, in making improvements, you know, through software and in some cases hardware you know, to build a better product to solve a certain set of requirements. And so in this case, you know, we'd been hearing some issues that people were having some problems focusing on physical content that was within that sort of arm range, arm, you know, arm's length distance. And so, um, and then at one point we had uh, Echelon Technologies that was working on a U.S. Marine Corps deployable mission rehearsal trainer with Verax, you know, come to us and say, hey, this is, a, this is an issue. Is there anything you can do to, uh, to fix this? And so we went back, had our engineers look at it, and uh, very quickly we built a custom headset that had a different lens in it that would set that fo the focusing point uh, much closer to the eye point than the standard product. So we put that together, we shipped the device out within a couple of weeks, and they took that, they put that into the, um, in, into the sim, they got pilots in there, and the results of the feedback on that were, it, were incredibly positive. So at that point, we started building more of them, and, uh, you know, really literally overnight, it uh, word got out about some product called the XR3 Plus, which was kind of the uh, sort of original code name. And, uh, and that was immediately adopted on a number of programs. So the deployable mission rehearsal trainer that's going to be deployed starting next year uh, is taking them. The TH-73 that's built by Frasca, uh, which is that other picture there, um, that's uh, going into deployment right away, all using the new Focal Edition because it solves that, uh, that arm's length problem. Exactly. And I, I'm, like I said to Ferhat, I, I think what we really are very unique at what you're doing, that we are close to the customer and we can turn even the hardest requirements and asks from the most advanced and most demanding customers into a, even a complete product. I think that's quite amazing. So how, you, how have you felt about this process going with the dialogue with our, with our most demanding customers? I mean, you've been in this field for, th for almost 40 years, so you know all about this customers well, and their demands. For me, the whole sim and training business is sort of a labor of love and, uh, you know, trying to, you know, produce these training devices is, uh, you know, been near and dear to my heart. And the, um, the, if you look at what's going on in the commodity world, you know, with headsets, all the focus that they're, they have is really on getting it cheaper, um, getting it something that can be, you know, deployed in, 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 a in your living rooms and then being able to track data and, and pull data from that. And Vario is completely the opposite. You know, their focus is on the enterprise needs, uh, you know, not, you know, collecting and doing other things with your data and, uh, you know, b uh, coming up and addressing these problems, I think is a, is it makes for a fantastic partnership of a company, you know, with an industry. And I think this is one of the best examples I've seen. Yeah. Defining XR3 Focal Edition labor, labor of love is, is excellent. I, I absolutely love it and I, I do agree wholeheartedly. Um, so if I think about the XR3 Focal Edition, 
how would you sum up the kind of customer benefits for the simulation and training industry with the XR3 Focal Edition? Well, I think the, what it does is it really allows you to do this mixed reality and to do it right. So, you know, with mixed reality, you're mixing, you know, real world physical objects that you that you put in front of the pilot. And, you know, you can see your hands, you can interact with those devices and everything else around it can be computer generated. And that allows you to develop muscle memory. It allows you to, to use operational flight programs, real hardware, um, tons of benefits with that in terms of, you know, building these devices that are gonna be more, be able to provide you with higher levels of training than something that's just VR. Because if it's just VR and you're messing around trying to pick things and, and you know, not use intuitive gestures and things that you would in a real aircraft. That has a potential to develop some negative training. Whereas with with the mixed reality solutions and the ability to read the text and the real to to you know, have your knee board and to operate exactly like you would do in the real uh, cockpit. It, uh, it just enables that technology. And I think that's gonna be uh, you know, what we really see for the future with a lot of the major training programs looking at that now. Right, and final question, how does the future look like for virtual training and, and, and simulation uh, from your, your point of view and, and now looking at what we have just introduced to the market? Well, <laughs> for me, it's uh, it, like I said, it's a personal thing, and I think the future looks very bright. You know, so bright that it's keeping me from retiring. So um, <laughs> that's something that we I've been happy. trying to do for a long time. And the, uh, but it's just very difficult to let go because it's so exciting to see what's going to happen in the next few years with, uh, you know, this and future technologies. Great, big thank you for everything you have done to serve. Um, this domain and, and, and really kind of advance the state of the art of the technology and let's keep on doing that together. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. Next, something even more uh, cool. So uh, our chief commercial officer, Seppo, had the uh, pleasure and privilege um, to talk with Mr. Jarno Lindberg. Jarno Lindberg is a um, general in reserve and also the former chief of Finnish Defense Forces with his background in aviation. So he had the, um, the chance to come to our office and see the XR3 Focal Edition uh, before anyone else. And um, next we will hear a short, short chat between Seppo and Jarno on his experiences on the XR3 Focal Edition. Great to have you here. Thank you. Warm welcome to Vario. And uh, would you like to introduce yourself to our audience today? Well, I am retired General uh, Jarmo Lindberg. Uh, my background is in aviation. I started it as a hobby, uh, 15 year old, then joined the Air Force. Uh, I flew uh, Soviet uh, MiG 21 BIS fighter jets for 11 and a half years and then converted to F 18. Uh, Hornets. I'm trained by the United States Navy in Naval Air Station Lemur, California, 1995, to fly the uh, Hornets. I was the commander of the first Hornets squadron in, in, in Finland, and then I have been in several operational joint positions. I have, have been the, the chief of Finnish Air Force and the chief of defense for, for Finland. And today you had a chance to fly the XR3 Focal Edition, so I'm still describe, smiling. <laughs> yeah, describe to our audience that, you know, how did that feel, make you feel and how, what did you experience? Well, well that was uh, really exciting uh, because of my background as a, as a Hornet pilot. So, so I got to do a, a catapult start uh, from a carrier, very realistic, uh, and it was combined uh, with uh, some uh, hydraulics to get the more realistic uh, uh, effect. And it's a very powerful uh, effect when you look uh, uh, everywhere, uh, 360, and you have a clear, sharp uh, picture vision uh, uh, around you. So you, you, you really are, you know, like, immersed in an, in an other world and you, you, you forget your surroundings. Uh, but the best thing uh, was that the, 
uh, scenery on a carrier deck and, and after the uh, cat shot was, was extremely realistic. And the, the clouds, uh, the sea, uh, land, uh, everything, uh, the lighting conditions were, were very good. I would say that um, it was extremely important that there is high quality uh, capabilities uh, to use your documents uh, while in flight and then also uh, sharp enough video uh, to use the uh, avionic and, and then to have a sharp reference to the real world. Why this is important? It is important that you're, you're capable of uh, using the documents in a way that, that you can uh, change the uh, channels for your navigation equipment. You can uh, put and align your uh, ILS approach information. And then, based on that information, you're able to fly in instrument meteorological uh, conditions. Uh, and then, when you have the visual cues, you can convert uh, and change from the uh, instrument flight into visual flight mode. And here, when I today made an approach to an aircraft carrier, I was able to do all of this. And the point here is to have the correct cross-checking procedures. So first, from the documents, into setting the, the uh, correct channels and everything, using the avionics and, and controls, and finally, uh, when you're doing the final approach and you have the visual cues, you can uh, align uh, and make the correct landing, whether it's an aircraft carrier or a normal airfield. It was very impressive to see the successful landing immediately in the aircraft carrier. Well, I found it real easy, uh, even though with my, my aviator uh, glasses, it was real easy to put it on uh, in a couple of uh, uh, seconds. Uh, uh, real easy also to align, so actually there are pretty much no procedures there. And, and it felt really light, so actually you, you, you almost immediately forget it that, that you have the goggles uh, uh, on there, very well balanced. And, and then it's a magical feeling when you look around you and suddenly uh, you have a, a totally different surrounding. So, so you forget it that you're in a room and, and you are suddenly uh, on an aircraft carrier uh, in the South Pacific and uh, you uh, are launching in a, in a fighter jet and everywhere you look around it's a different and, oh, by the way, very realistic world. Quite different from the snowy Helsinki we were today when you <laughs> poured yourself into the... Sure. So yeah, I like the palm trees <laughs> out there. <laughs> uh, uh, if, what's your perspective of the benefits of using mixed reality technologies, so combining physical instruments with the virtual simulator model? Well, the challenge is that, that if you only have goggles and you have no idea of, of what is around you. So if, if you only have uh, the uh, uh, avionics and the instruments uh, on, on the goggles, you don't see your hands, you don't see any, any controls, you don't feel any real uh, controls, uh, then it's actually almost Im impossible to do the right maneuvers and to have, you know, kind of a muscle uh, learning of uh, what you need to do uh, in the real cockpit. Yeah, so the power of mixed reality for realistic training is very, very high. Then. It, it is crucial here. If you're missing uh, any of these, then actually your training is not realistic, you're not doing the right procedures, and actually your training might be counterproductive. Thank you so much for taking the time to giving us the, 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 the feedback. My pleasure. So there you had it, um, approved by the uh, former chief of Finnish Defense Forces. I think it's pretty good approval. I, I think so, I would say so too. Yeah, exactly. But uh, maybe to sum it up, uh, the XR3 Focal Edition is of course, we've been talking a lot about uh, training and simulation in aerospace. 
uh, which has kind of like been leading us into creating the most advanced product in this field. But let's talk about a little bit about more other applications as okay. well, um, in addition uh, to the aerospace. So, Ferrat, you've been working very closely with our customers. What kind of other uses you have been kind of observing or seeing coming for this super focused, near focused uh, version of the XR3? Yeah, sure, sure. Of course, we have seen only, only the pilot training ones, uh, but the use cases are, are limitless in this case uh, based, on the, <clears throat> based on certain requirements. The first one is automotive. Mm. And in automotive, um, the first thing that comes to, to all the customers' mind and the, the engagements that we had with the customers is mm. to use it in uh, driving simulators. Right. Again, and it is, you have a physical driving like interior of a car, that you need to see the details of the car, that you need to see the dials and that you see the buttons, and outside of the windows that you want to see the virtual one. So it's again a suitable, um, suitable use case for XR3 right, Focal right. Edition. And I, I guess also the interior design, where you're actually looking at the interiors and you want to see them parity. Parity between what you have added there as a digital layer uh -huh. and parity with the physical layer. So with the Focal Edition, those comes like true parity, if you think about the interior design. Yeah, definitely. That's also one of the use cases uh, recently uh, started, to, started to utilize the fo uh, Focal Edition. Uh, because in the interior design, you sometimes have the full interior uh, of a cockpit, full physical interior of a cockpit, and um, you, you do some design, design uh, processes along, along with it, or you mix and match a virtual, cock, a virtual uh, dashboard car mm. interior with a real physical uh, car interior. And in, the, in those cases, you definitely will be benefiting from the Focal Edition, and we have seen customers utilizing that for already already as of now. Yeah, absolutely. And then the third one, uh, really interesting, is of course medical. Now medical, many times it is as associated with the, that you need the absolute clarity and, and, and focus to be able to do those things. And, and it's definitely a kind of like mission critical thing uh, when, you, when you operate kind of with medical instruments. What's your insight into the medical, medical field? Yeah, and it's also a similar, um, similar use case that you need to see the things that are close to you uh, in an arm's length distance. Uh, particularly, it could be um, a doll that you need to see and identify certain things on the doll or a medical device that you utilize with the doll or without the doll. And you need to be able to see and make, have some readings from the, from the device, from the uh, physical device and then do some operation and uh, learn how to, utilize, how to use the device. And in that case, uh, close distance clarity is super crucial too, and Focal Edition is a, is a great uh, opportunity to utilize, uh, to utilize the, in, in this, this kind of simulation uh, trainings too. Yeah, exactly, and I, I, I think medical, especially when, when they're holding devices, medical uh -huh. devices in your hand, and you, you need to have that absolute clarity of what you're holding in your hand. So I think in general, if you think about this mixed reality, and whenever you are operating something with your hands or, oh. or using a device in your hand, um, that's, where the, that's where the focal edition really, really shines. And of course, we together with Ferhat can't wait on what kind of other you know, things our customers will, will come up with. And as usual, we are here to work together with you. Ferhat will be <laughs> most likely visiting you. And, uh, and that's how we operate. That's how we <coughs> steer our R&D and product roadmaps with the most demanding use cases and most advanced features that you can think of. That's how we roll. Exactly. Exactly. Looking forward to it. Yeah. So next, um, <clears throat> we are going to Q&A. So we will be answering all your uh, questions here live uh, with Ferhat. And, um, and if there's any more, many more that you haven't had a chance to, to send to us, you know, we will answer it online later. But <clears throat> let's start now we, um, with the questions. So f uh, first, <clears throat> um, by Anonymous, I have a question about the XR3 lighthouse tracking on full motion platforms. Do you have any form of motion cancellation and is it ever a problem with aggressive motion? Well, good question. Not directly relevant to Focal Edition, mm. but uh, I, can, I can definitely answer. Um, but we have the Vario um, tracking plugin API that you can basically utilize and develop your, uh, your plugin to compensate for any type of motion. As long as you get the data from, from the motion platform, you can simply uh, calculate, and, uh, uh, calculate and compensate for that motion. 
and you can have your uh, motion platform to be suitable with, mm. the, with the XR3 or VR3 or Aero. Right. Thanks for the question. Good question. Um, then uh, something about uh, specifically the, the focal edition. So we talked about the uh, we talked about the depth of field. Um, so what is the depth of field for the standard XR3 com in comparison to the focal edition? Yeah, that's also a, a pretty pretty good question. So the standard XR3 was designed to be targeting a half a meter mm. to be the um, start of the depth of field and then to go to infinity. So from, from half a meter to infinity is the standard edition. That's what we then changed it to be closer to 30 and 80 centimeters in the focal edition. Right, right. Good. And then um, there's a question from Charles uh, about the pass-through camera latency numbers for XR3 versus XR3 focal edition. Is there a difference on the latency? Easy answer, no. The, the latency is the same, so it's sub-20 millisecond latency. Ex uh, exactly. Latency. Same latency, barely, no, you cannot notice it, right? Um, <clears throat> Markus sends a question on if you have early 22 generation of the XR3 or VR3, could I upgrade? You technically can, yes, and I'll get an upgrade uh, by contacting sales, uh, our sales team, either through the forum or if you have already contacts with our, with our sales team, they are happy to help you and they will be happy to hear, um, hear your potential, potential use case. Yeah, and from Benito, what is the estimated cost of the focal edition? I can give the same answer. Please contact our sales. They are happy to provide you further with the cost. Um, e, are there any, uh, from Michael, uh, are there any implications for focal edition in a chroma key application? Is it different or same with the, uh, with the normal XR3? Again, easy answer, it's the same. Whatever you have with the XR3 are gonna be possible also with the uh, XR3 focal edition in a chroma setting. You will be able to see the things clearer which are close to you. Uh, so that's, that's the benefit that comes along with it again. But the chroma feature is not affected either negatively or positively. Mm -hmm. Then from Michael Baker, should we expect 2020 vision when looking inside the cockpit? So inside the cockpit, I, I think this refers to the physical, physical. cockpit. Yes, uh, I haven't measured myself, so I cannot really 100% answer uh, to that uh, video mixed mm. reality camera performance uh, to achieve 2020 vision. Uh, but we can get back to you. Uh, I can talk with our uh, engineering team and we can get back to you about, the, uh, about this particular question mm. in a uh, blog post that we will post right after, the, right after the webinar. Great question. And I, I think we did extensive testing on a very small font, like we went mm -hmm. down the font number and, 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 and basically down to the number that were kind of approved by, by our customers. So it was kind of like past the test of like whatever uh, flight trainers will see in their mm -hmm. knee boards and, and these meters. So it's, it is very accurate. It, to confirm with their 2020 vision, we will get back to you as, as, I, as I mentioned. Exactly. Okay, uh, Martin Ek, um, if the headset focal distance is shorter, that might increase the risk of virgin's accommodation issues when showing objects at a distance. Perhaps you should be even more careful when showing faraway content. Do you have any tricks to reduce the risk, or risk for virgin's accommodation problems? This is again an advanced question, but I can throw um, some, some things that I know already. One thing to, um, to differentiate here is the what we changed in the focal edition is the focus distance of the uh, mixed reality cameras, not the uh, focal dis distance of the, of the headset itself. So this is only pertaining to the mixed reality cameras uh, focus distance. Uh, but again, to go deeper in that question, I, uh, I know the amazing engineers who has the, uh, who has the, um, who has the background, or maybe John might have some some notes on, on this question too, uh, but uh, if, if John doesn't have um, some inputs, then I can get back to you also with the, with the blog post. I, I, I do have some notes. inputs. Um, so it, it's a good question. And the answer is, is that uh, most of the content that is uh, that you're seeing at a distance is all going to be virtual. And so there's very few, uh, very small amounts uh, of physical content in most use cases that uh, 
that you're going to see. So if you look at the cockpits, everything's within, you know, 60, 80, you know, maybe a hundred in- inches and anything that's within or centimeters, anything that's within that uh, depth of field is, is going to be come from the cameras and it'll be fine. Anything in the distance um, is just kind of automatically collimated because it's generated using computer generated uh, content. Exactly, John. This was a great answer uh, because the focal edition has been specifically made so that you see the physical things that are on arm's length and when there's far away things that are virtual, then of course you see them at the same clarity as with the normal XR3. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah, so so I, I think it's it's important to understand that that the, the focal edition isn't for everyone. It's it's for people that have lots of physical content within that arm's length. If you're um, you're looking at, you know, content or objects or physical objects that are you know in a room or at a distance that will be out of focus with the focal edition. And so for those kind of use cases, you really want to stick with the standard XR3. Exactly. Good. Thank you. Uh, then um, I think there's a related quest- question from Luke John. Uh, um, focal, uh, uh, the, the question goes like, the, is the focal edition for other use cases or is it always better, better than the current version? I, I think you, John, answered that very nicely. Yep. Just, yes. It is for special use cases. It's not a succeeder to the XR3. It is for Yeah, I think you just, you think about that arm's length uh, idea. If you have content that's within an arm's length that you want to be able to see in great detail using the VST cameras, focal is for you. If you need to see content that's further away, the regular XR3 is for you. Exactly. From Michael J. St. James, does the focal range optimization have impact on pricing? I can answer, yes, it has impact on pricing. Um, And also, like we went through in this webinar, there are other improvements in this focal edition, namely the TAA, um, kind of like uh, approval. Yeah, exactly. And and then this known radio kind of like uh, setup. So, yes, there's an impact on pricing. Um, then, um, the focal edition removes a major barrier for, for, for flight simulation application. Good job. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Any plans for integrated audio uh, microphones slash headphones? Of course, it's again for some roadmap question, uh, which we will see in the future uh, how, how things do play out. But right now, you can still use the, the 3.5 millimeter jack that's on the, that's on the headset. Um, to utilize the uh, headphones and uh, microphones if you want to, if your use case requires um, that, kind of a, that kind of a hardware edition. Exactly. And if you are in the market for, for a lot of these headsets, please contact our sales. I'm sure we can find a way to help you with this solution. Um, then, um, is there a plan for expanded wireless capabilities within the current HMD offering? goes a little bit into our roadmap thing. Um, nothing to comment on that at the moment. And then, um, with the XR3 non-radio edition, can you partner with HTC to offer Lighthouse 1.0 with no radio to improve tracking in secure environments? What tracking solutions do you recommend for use with XR3 focal edition with no radio communication? Uh, right now, the current um, t- tracking technology that out of the box comes with it is this thing we are tracking, mm. uh, which is based on either um, HTC Vive um, base stations 2.0 or 1.0. Um, you can also utilize third party tracking solutions, uh, such as ART, uh, is one of, the, one of the third party tracking solutions that has uh, support for audio headsets, and also OptiTrack. Uh, that also um, you can also utilize OptiTrack, uh, which is again a professional grade uh, tracking solution. So both of the, all those options are in mar- like are currently on in the market. They work with the with the Mario headsets. If the Steam VR solution is not a good solution for your use case, then you can also utilize the uh, professional grade tracking solutions that also has Mario support. Cool. <clears throat> then from Jonathan, can units be upgraded to focal or cross-graded between focal and standard with a factory 
or user lens swap? Yeah, that was expecting that, that kind of a question coming in. Um, since this is a completely different variant, we have um, changed the mixed reality camera components in. So it's not just like, oh, I'm just going to switch this, this lens and put this lens and it's going to be suddenly, suddenly a focal, focal addition. There's more to that, that goes into it. Uh, so there's no easy way or there's no technical possible way mm. that you can put another lens on it or snap a lens on it, which, becomes, which makes it a focal addition. Good. Thanks. Uh, I just want to make a comment on the last question yeah, about please. security. So, um, so we are working uh, secure solutions with many different customers right now who are trying to uh, bring this technology into SCIFs, classified areas, to do you know, a whole variety of different um, uh, uh, classified training. And the, the, the proposed way of using the 1.0 um, trackers that don't have Bluetooth is uh, is something that we could do, but the thing is, is that Vive is actually end of life their whole secure solution, and so the and also the the one dot trackers just don't work very well, and so and uh, what happens is is you have kind of janky uh, uh, tracking, it, it, it you drop a lot of fields. The system works much better with the two dot os. So you know as this technology is kind of going through these um, machinations with um with you know ex you know, vive exiting the market with um with the secure solutions we are um aggressively looking for ways to replace that and so we, we can't announce anything about that now but it's certainly something that we're working in the background to try to come up with a, a solution that will support classified customers good Thanks, John. Great answer. And this, this next one will go to John to you as well. Really great questions from Michael Baker. Are there any aspects of traditional projector-based simulators that still outperforms the headset solution? Um, sure. I mean, if you look at at the, the 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 huge simulators that you have at Pax River for, you know, JSE, JSF, and <clears throat> and those kind of things you know they're fantastic you know the fidelity is just incredibly unbelievable they're, they're all also incredibly expensive they're not mobile they're extremely uh expensive to to run to maintain and things like that so you know whereas we're in a time now with sort of unprecedented fidelity in in the traditional simulation market the um what we're seeing from the the the, you know, this constant need to try to cut costs and then really to provide training at the point of need is that uh, the desires coming out that they'd rather have these, you know, lower footprint devices where they can have a lot of them, where, where they can get pilots in there to get a lot of reps and sets, um, that they can train, uh, you know, 24-7, you know, when they need them, having the devices available. Uh, you know, rather than, you know, having one or two really super expensive devices that, you uh, um, are, are just perfect. So I, I think it's the sort of good enough syndrome that uh, that we see coming out with these devices. And, and you know, as we continue to develop more of this technology, I think they're just the, the head mounted display version are just going to get better and better. Thanks. Absolutely. And it's a, it's a, it was a great question. Really, really happy to hear a good answer to that one. Um, then from Jonathan Haves, Will inside-out tracking become priority within Vario moving forward, or is the plan to stick with using base stations? I can take that one. So how Vario operates is that we really closely follow uh, the requirements from our, from our customers. And, and uh, when customers start to tell us that, hey, now it's time uh, to move truly into a solution uh, that is inside out, then we will, then we will continue and, and, and work within that lead. And uh, that's how we kind of prioritize our R&D. And, uh, and for sure, um, what about you, Ferhat? You're, you have insights about customers. Yeah, about, definitely. So, yeah. definitely. Um, well, we, since we were also believing inside that tracking, it's why with the uh, XR3, we started uh, testing it and utilizing it in a beta phase. So right now with XR3, uh, you can have the inside out tracking, uh, but it's still in beta because we have we are working on it uh, to utilize the current um, hardware that we do we do have in the in the headset. 
And of course, uh, we are working on it. It's still, still going to be a work in progress. Um, and in, with XR3, you can utilize insider tracking with the fact that it's going to be in beta. Exactly. And there's another from, um, from Jonathan. Why is insider tracking still in beta? Is there a timeline for when it's moving forward? Easy answer to this one. It's still beta because it's not good enough. <laughs> we are only happy when it's the best in the world, right? That's exactly. why we call it bet. Exactly. We, we, we wouldn't be satisfied otherwise exactly. to call it a production. And we started it because, again, of the, of the requirements that are coming from our customers. And we wanted to test it out and uh, beta test it, actually, to see mm -hmm. how, we can, how much we can achieve with the, current, uh, with the current hardware that we do have. And we are going to be like, working on it, but it's going to be in beta, just, just for everyone's uh, information. Exactly. Um, then there's a question of, I think this is interesting, um, from Mars. Hey, I work in medical field with VR. How does mixed reality help improve the patient's experience while they go through chemotherapy? Hmm. Quite, an, uh, quite an advanced use case, really interesting use case, uh, by the way. Um, I think this could be a very you know, <laughs> exciting thing to actually kind of like ideate and imagine it together with our customers if they're if there would be a kind of a like use case. I find it quite a very cool idea. Yeah, it's a basically a dedicated use case that you need to conceptualize and develop a, develop a product to, uh, to utilize it. And uh, VR3, XR3 and XR3 Focal Edition would be, uh, would be of help uh, onto, onto, on that kind, of a, that kind of a use case. You just need, you need to be thinking a little bit on it um, and be developing the application. Exactly. That if you have ideas on this one, um, Please, please contact us. I, I, I think this is really, really inspirational and, and important, important thing to, to, to work on. So if, you, if you're working on this, please, please contact us and let's, let's, let's do something together. Um, from Michael, uh, is there any flexibility in setting uh, slash adjusting slash extending the focal range? So what about settings? Life would be a perfect place if there was an easy slider that you can just like change it. Yeah. And also for the far end and the near end, I want this range to be the best. Uh, but unfortunately, no, there's no uh, uh, easy way. There's no way to change that. Once it's fixed, it's fixed. It's going to be uh, this way. And nobody can, nobody can change it. <laughs> exactly. Um, OK, from Max, a little bit outside of the focal edition range. But anyway, uh, what are the ideas for the metaverse and eSports? with this mixed reality technology. Thank you for pushing the limits of AR, VR, and mixed reality. Well, you know, eSports, if I think that, you know, that's there you need to have the perfect fidelity that you can, you know, react and do things, uh, let's say, similar to racing, for example, mm -hmm. if you would have a uh, physical um, steering wheel, otherwise virtual focal edition would be the right choice, right? Yeah, definitely, because that's, again, whenever you need to use something physical in a close distance, it's going to be benefiting. Exactly, exactly. But in, in, in general, the mixed reality that we offer through the XR3 for these use cases is, is, is really, really advanced stuff. So please try it out. Okay, um, then from Anonymous, will you be sending a link to see recording of this video? Yes, there will be a link. Uh, please follow your email and our social media channels. There will be a link. Um, good. I think we are maybe running out of, maybe we might have one more. One question. more question. Good. We have um, just one more good question here from Michael Baker. Are there any light level restrictions? Could, could it still be used in a dark cockpit as seen with night flying? How would we, how, how would we do this night flying? Yes, good question again, uh, again, particularly from a, from a use case. Mm. Um, in general, the camera technology requires light um, and you can utilize you can utilize the night night vision, but John might have might have more insights already on on this topic, and uh, he might he might uh, chip in. Sure, I, I can talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, they in order for mixed reality to work well, you need to just completely uh, cover the the subject with light. The more light, the better it's going to be. The less shadows you're going to have. Light, light, light. That's uh, critical requirement for this. So if you're trying to do night vision or you're trying to do other um, simulations where you need to have uh, a lower ambient light, what we've done is we've developed a, uh, a shader that will allow you to artificially lower the light level 
regardless of the the real ambient light level that's on the subject. So you can make it appear to the the user that the cockpit is dark, but yet in reality you 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 have to keep that light on them. So so that's something that we work very hard uh, and got some great customer feedback on here. So the the uh, these shaders are what's uh, what helps you to do that. Thanks, John. Yeah, the shaders, we, we introduced it, it during last year already, these mixed reality shaders, and I, I found them really advanced. Really, you could have this night vision kind of like thing looking, and, and these shaders are quite, quite unique to what it. Yeah, it basically enables you to simulate any, um, any video post-processing on top of the mixed reality image. This could be the night vision goggles simulation, or this could be some eye defect that you want to simulate, like tunnel vision or blurry vision. So you can actually simulate and process the mixed reality camera feed, uh, just, uh, just as uh, John and um, UC has mentioned. Exactly. So now, I, I think now we are um, done with the questions. Thank you all. If there were more questions that we didn't have time to answer, we will be answering them in a follow-up blog post that will be uh, going through the content of this um, webinar, but also, also all the relevant information uh, from, based on your questions. Big thank you uh, for everyone joining. And uh, final reminder, of course, for anyone, everybody who are interested in the XR3 Focal Edition, please contact us, contact our sales. And, um, and there's a nice little QR code. If you scan it with your phone, you will get the Vario product book of the XR3 Focal Edition. So there you have it, uh, XR3 Focal Edition, the most advanced mixed reality product for specific use cases at arm's length, where you need the most visual fidelity and create parity between virtual and the real. Any other final comments? And it, was, it was a pleasure um, to introduce uh, the Focal Edition. Yeah. To you, exactly. We continue to innovate here at Vario, continue doing the best products in the world. Big thank you for your support and uh, catch you on the next one. Bye. Cheers.